Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with several cards using hot foiling because I love hot foiling. It is wonderful. <laughs> However, specifically with, uh, this is the new Sweet Pea Hot Foil Plate, sketched Sweet Pea Hot Foil Plate from Waffle Flower. You could totally use the stamp set and just stamp or stamp and heat emboss. You don't have to get the hot foil plate. That is definitely an option. I love the hot foils because my inner magpie is very much appeased by the shiny. <laughs> so this time I am using Spellbinders Prism. Is that what it's called? Yes, Prism foil, which is oh, lovely. Like the look at the rainbow reflex. Like look at it. Normally I always do gold. I it's just habit, but. I was like, maybe, maybe this time I'll do something a little different. Instead of gold, let's see something else. So I pulled this out and I'm so glad I did because it's gorgeous. So right now, this is in real time. I always, you know, edit my videos to go faster so that we're not sitting here all day. Um, so, and this just kind of is harder to do on camera. <laughs> Trying to cut foil and show you guys what I'm doing. I just, anyway, because people have been asking. But what I have found that really just, works is I trim my foil to just slightly larger than whatever hot foil plate I'm using and this is a big one this piece of cardstock is four and a quarter by five and a half inches just to give you an idea like this this sketched uh sweet pea hot foil plate is huge I love it anyway I trim my foil to close to the size of my hot foil plate I tape the foil to the cardstock I'm foiling on and I tape it, you always have the pretty side of the foil facing up. So basically the back of the foil is touching the cardstock. And then most of the time, it's like, if I'm going to be doing this, you know, if I'm going to turn my machine on, do all the things, might as well do more than one. So I get everything prepped for both because especially um, after you hot foil the first thing, the machine's ready to go, it heats up faster, you know, all the things. So it's like, just get things ready ahead of time. So with my second piece, I'm just taping, you know, I've trimmed the foil to the same size and I'm just going to tape it. I use Spellbinder's little narrow uh, washi tape. This stuff just works great. And I just tape the foil down and now I'm ready to go. So I'm going to be a little extra. I'll trim off some of this excess foil. For the most part, not a big deal. Um, you want to be more careful of this if you are not, if you don't have like a coordinating wafer die to die cut things, then I'll be extra, you know, making sure to trim off any excess because you don't want that over foiling. But generally I find at least for however long now, since I've been just taping my foil and I don't tape a ton. You see, I only use like a couple little pieces. That's it. That seems to be more than enough to just hold the foil in place so that it's not curling up and moving around. And then taping the hot foil plate to the cardstock as well. That also prevents it from moving around. So I had my Glimmer hot foil machine um, heating up while I was doing all of that. So then the light was on. I put my piece with the hot foil plate touching the machine. Press the timer button. It runs for about a minute to heat it up. And then I have the two plates. And I run it through my Platinum 6 die cut machine. And then I just got to remove it. And oh. Seriously, I was like, why haven't I been using this foil more? It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at the rainbow colors it reflects. I love it. So once the machine's been like heated up it and you, you run it through once, it reheats again quite quickly. So that's why I had the second piece prepped, ready to go. So then all I had to do was tape the uh, hot foil plate in place, press the timer button again, let that run for the minute or so till it goes solid. And then I run it through my die cut machine, same process, remove the foil, remove the plate, and I've got my images. So I'm also going to do the same thing. This is the uh, Gilded Butterfly Hot Foil Plate. I'm mean, doing the exact same process, so I'm just sped up this part of the video because I'm literally doing the same thing. Same foil, same steps, all the things. So ran that through the machine. This one looks a lot... Um, a lot more underwhelming. You need, you definitely, this one, you need the coordinating wafer die. It just, you know, finishes it off. But I foiled two pieces with this one as well. Because I was like, 
And why not? So ran it through, had the everything prepped, ready to go, did it a second time. With these pieces, I'm going to use the leftover foil and foil them with my solid hot foil plate. I could have done the same with the sweet pea ones as well, but I didn't want to do that because I just wanted the outlines with the sweet peas as they're like meant to be. But with these butterflies, I was like, ooh, why not? So I've got my big pink fresh solid hot foil plate. The, the solid hot foil plate is where things can get finicky. Trust me. I, ha oh, I have struggled with this thing. However, for me, it just works. Again, just the simple act of just taping the foil to the cardstock. Game changer. Who'd have thunk? Also, what you can do is heat up your solid hot foil plate, turn your machine off, turn it back on and heat it up a second time before running it through or doing anything because that sometimes seems to be an issue. So try that if you've struggled. I found that I haven't had to do that since just the simple act of taping the foil to the cardstock. And that's all I did. I had taped those pieces that were left over to the cardstock the the little washi tape will almost fuse to that hot foil plate because it gets hot but I just carefully remove it remove the little bits of tape remove the little um little bit of release um backing from the foil and then I've got the reverse as well which again like the reflect love and they'll it'll look better once I die cut those but I'll get to that so now to the actual no coloring because I use stencils I talked about this with, was it last month? <laughs> I'll link to it. I did those daffodil vellum cards with um, waffle flowers. Uh, same idea. It was like the hot foil plate and then I used the coordinating stencils. And it just kind of blew me away because I didn't even realize waffle flower had been doing this for a little bit. So same idea. They have these stencils and there's outlines on the stencil. And I tried to show that in the video, but there's like an outline and it's numbered and it even says like light, medium, dark, like it's all there for you. There's also a guide um, with the links to the products. There's like a, a visual guide as well, which that helps too. And my big like bonus for me anyway with these stencils is they don't just fill in the areas. I'm fine with that too. I, I genuinely like that, but these add more detail. So the first layer with the greenery, that's all it does. It just fills it in. So it says um, it's layer one and it says medium. So I went in, I just, I, I follow the steps. <laughs> I've said this in other, in other videos. Like, I'm just, you tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. You know, it just is what it is. But I used a medium green ink. I'm using all of uh, Simon's positively saturated inks here. And this first one was Fairway. So nice medium green. And then the second layer, it says uh, dark. And this adds detail. And that's what I really liked with the last, the one I did with the daffodils. Once you see it, like once I remove the stencil, it's like, oh, okay, this is cool. Because again, not everyone likes to color. Not everyone is comfortable with coloring. And, you know, and sometimes it could be physical limitations, like being able to hold color pencils, et cetera, et cetera. But for a lot of people I know, they're just not comfortable with coloring images. And I get that. Me personally, you guys know, I love coloring images. I've been doing it since I was like literally a toddler. It's just my thing. But I like these stencils because one, it just gives that little extra artistic oomph to everyone. But I also like it because it's fun. Like, and it, like, you'll see it as I do, especially these floral parts. I like how these stencils add this detail and layers that I, I, it would take me a long time to do this freehand, like coloring with markers, etc. But again, if you are comfortable with coloring and aren't a fan of stencils, you can skip this and just color it, watercolor it, markers, you know, Copic markers, all the things like the sky's the limit. So with the florals, there are three layers, light, medium, and dark. And again, I just followed the directions and I did light, medium, and dark. I went in with lilac, which was my lightest purple. And then I'm going in with orchid, which is my medium. And that's where you start seeing the detail. And then the final layer is amethyst, which is my darkest. And it adds this final like layer and depth. And I just, 
I, I should have had this sound. You guys would have been laughing at me because I was just like, oh, look at like, look at this. It's just it's amazing. <laughs> it's like this just oh, these stencils are the best. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, with these, I just rinse them off in the sink between the colors because, of course, I was like, one's going to be in purples. One's going to be in pinks. These are sweet peas. I love sweet peas. I need to plant some this year. I don't really have that much of a green thumb, but I'm, I'm slowly working on it. I love, and I love flowers and sweet peas or something. I used to grow these when I was a kid and I just, I love them. I don't know. There's just something about them and the smell. Oh, they're beautiful. Anyway, anyway, did the first ones in purple. These ones are in pink. So I use bubble gum, sweets, and taffy inks. Again, light, medium, dark, and my little waffle flower bl blending brushes. And these just came together so quickly. That's another thing I, I personally love about coordinating stencils like this is when I'm doing multiples or my me and my chaotic crazy life and I don't have a lot of time because everything just seems to happen at once. I can do this and have these images colored and it just it doesn't take very long. Love it. So anyway, once those are done, I use the coordinating wafer die. And like I said earlier, you can skip if you don't want to do the hot foiling. I, you could have stamped those images with the coordinating stamp set because it's the exact same size as the hot foil plate. So the stencils work with it, etc. So you could stamp it or stamp and heat emboss it, you know, heat embossing gold, of course, <laughs> it would look beautiful and then do the stenciling or color it, it would work. So with the butterfly, there is a coordinating stencil set for the butterfly and it's a two layer set. So I did the first layer with my lightest ink and this time I'm doing aqua colors. So I did sea foam with the larger blending brush and just like laid down that color over the stencil. Then I went in with a medium ink that was surf ink and I'm using Waffle Flowers um, shader one brushes. So not the tiniest ones, the like medium sized ones. And I've used these in a ton of videos. I love these brushes. And I just dragged the darker color from like the center points of all those little openings. And then I did the same thing with the second stencil, but with the second stencil, I did the medium color, which was surf. And then the darkest color, which is ocean is with the little detail brush so that I'm getting just more variation. And again, it's like, Ooh, once you lift off the stencil, it's like, Oh yes lovely and then once it's die cut you'll actually see the whole butterfly because the the die cut die cuts the the wings and the body so then it all makes sense so i'm repeating the process this time with other purples because so i was like you know go big or go home i'm gonna pulling all the inks out so th these purple shades are heather violet and iris so just more of a cool toned purple same process uh lightest purple with the bigger blending brush and then I go in with my medium purple, which is violet, and the little uh, one shader brush and just kind of drag that so I get the two, two tones of color. And then I'll put on the second stencil and I'll do the medium color as my solid. And then the darkest color will get drug in with the little shader brush. So I get all that variation. And then it's got the hot foil prism reflect and yeah love it so after i did all of the stenciling like i said i just rinse my i just rinse my stencils off in the sink rinse them off and then i just let them air dry and they're good to go so i did all my stenciling so i did all my hot foiling first then i did all of my stenciling and then i die cut all of these images with the coordinating wafer dies so here is the butterfly wafer die. And like I said, it cuts out the wings and the body. So then it all makes sense, you know. So tape that into place with washi tape. Die cut those. And then back to the sweet pea cards. So I've got everything die cut. Now it's time to start putting things together. So on the insides of these cards, this is going to be top folding A2 white note cards. I just stamped that uh, sketched sweet pea uh, image with the lightest of the ink trios I used to stencil them. So for the purple card, it was lilac ink. For the pink card, it's going to be bubblegum ink. And that's all I did on the insides of these cards. I decided for these two just to keep it simple because um, I'm going to use just a basic sentiment. So I decided not to stamp. There's a few little sentiments with the stamp set that 
a really nice like kindness and thank you, which are the cards I make the most of, but I just left it open-ended. And then, like I said, I'm using a generic sentiment. This is the hugs, um, simple, simply said hugs hot foil plate. And I did the same thing like I did in the beginning. I foiled it with that prism foil. I, I used the solid hot foil plate and foiled the like leftovers. I didn't end up liking that, but it's funny on camera. It looks better. The, the solid piece, because I think it's just picking up the reflect. So it's a lot more obvious, but in real life, I just didn't like it. I didn't like how it looked. It, it just wasn't showing up. It's hard to explain because it literally, like you can see it on camera. It looks amazing. Go figure. I have the hardest time filming and taking pictures of anything with foil because my camera goes nuts. But this time it's just like, haha. <laughs> anyway, I didn't like it, but I didn't want to get rid of them. So I just offset them with the regular um, sentiments that I had hot foiled. So that just gave them a little extra something. So I adhered them together. And then um, my backgrounds, I pulled out an older waffle flower set. This is the fancy frames wafer die set. And I die cut them from just a light pink and a light purple cardstock. And I adhered the um, foiled sketch sweet peas to them with um, foam squares. So they've got some dimension to them. And then I did the same thing with those sentiments. And then I'm going to adhere these to the card bases with craft tacky glue. And I made sure that I was adhering like the pink sweet pea to the card base that had the pink stamped on the inside and the purple same thing because yeah more often than not I'm not paying enough attention and you know mess it up not like it's you know the end of the world but it would just be annoying and then of course bling of course bling I have these uh treaty stamps rainbow reflection embellishments which were perfect with the prism foil because they're kind of the same idea they literally reflect rainbow just like the prism foil meant to be love it chef's kiss all the things so I did that and then I also used some uh, rose tinted glasses embellishments which are the light pink and perfume bottle embellishments which are the light purple and added a ton of them why not go big or go home and like I said inner magpie very much appeased love it and for me I kind of consider these more simple cards I think because I just you know I hot foiled and I stenciled I didn't do splatter, you know, or watercolor or ink smushing or the 5 million other things I like to do. So I consider them more simple. So then I'll just add like 30 pieces of bling and that just finishes it off. I guess that's the, the justification. Like I need to justify anything, but trying to explain the thought process. Anywho, I use the same fancy frames for the butterfly cards. I used an, a light purple and a, kind of a light aqua cardstock. And then those inner frames of darker cardstock, that's from the same die set. And I die cut those from darker cardstock. And then the inner portions I use to stamp and heat emboss sentiments from this little coordinating fluttering by stamp set. And my first attempt, I did silver embossing powder. Didn't like it. You can you literally, this time the camera is accurate. You can't really see it. I wasn't happy with it. So I just moved the cardstock to the other side. Restamped the sentiments after I had used my anti-static powder tool stamp the sentiments with clear embossing ink and use white embossing powder much better can legibly see it and then I'm going to use the coordinating little wafer die to die cut these and I'm also going to use the rest of those pieces to die cut a couple more for to stack up the sentiment which I'll show in a minute so I die cut those reverse hot foil butterflies so now you can see the full butterfly and on the insides of the cards, I'm stamping another sentiment from that little fluttering by set. And I use just the darkest of the ink trios that I stenciled the butterflies with. So I used ocean ink and iris ink to stamp those sentiments on the insides of the cards. And then I'm going to adhere those solid foiled butterflies with craft tacky glue. So I'm going to adhere those into place. And then once, like give that a minute to let the glue kind of dry. And then I'm just going to flip these over and using the edge of the card as my, like uh, the edge of the card base as my guide, I'm just going to trim off the pieces that are hanging over the edge with scissors, just like so. And yeah, I had misstamped the one. So I just flipped the card around and stamped the proper thing on the inside because the part that was on the outside is getting covered up by the die cuts. So yeah, 
happens all the time. All the time. <laughs> so anywho, I adhered the frames to the card bases with craft tacky glue. I could totally, you could totally go big and like do embellishments or like die cut multiple times, stack, layer, etc. With these ones, I decided not to. I just, I think they've got more than enough going on. And then I adhered my stenciled and hot foil butterflies. And then the sentiments, like I said, I had die cut multiple times, especially with these ones because they're very, um, they're small and it would have been more of a pain to add foam dimension to the back of them. Like I would have had to trim like the teeniest little pieces. So that's why I love coordinating wafer dies for sentiments because then I can just stack them so much faster, so much easier. So I stacked those sentiments with the extra little cardstock layers and then adhered those to the centers of the butterflies. And then with these ones, I just added those uh, rainbow reflection embellishments just to finish them off because you just got to have some bling. So fiddled around with that for a few minutes till I was happy with where I had them placed. And then once I was, you know, got it all figured out and told myself, you know, you don't don't need to add 37 plus pieces of blank to each card. <laughs> uh, once I was happy with it, I'm going to tear those into place and that's going to finish off these cards. So then I can show you guys like the close ups and the reflect and all the fun things. And then um, I will have a link below the video to my blog post definitely worth checking out because this video is part of a blog hop for Waffle Flowers uh, April 2023 release. I can't believe it's April already. It's nuts. Anyway, part of a blog hop. So there is tons of inspiration from so many fabulous makers. I will have links to them all in my blog post. Um, I'll have links to the supplies I used, a giveaway, all that stuff. So that'll be in my blog post. Just check the description box below the video. It'll be the first link. And then as always, I'll have links to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. I know I joke about the robot overlords. It's true. Algorithms run my entire career and I am at their mercy. So the one thing that definitely is a massive help is liking, commenting, watch time, all those things. Um, it helps and I very much appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd love it if you did. And yeah, that's it for the moment. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.